Well, um, you think the players took to heart kind of your um, frustration from Wednesday and have you seen some improvement there? You know, Greg, I, uh, I think they've, uh, I, I think they saw the film more than they listened to what I said. I mean, the film was uh, brutally honest and, uh, and uh, we've certainly got to make some adjustments and got to get some improvement going on. But we've, you know, um, the proof will be in the pudding at 6 o'clock on Friday. But, uh, you know, wasn't much as what I said. You know, a lot of these guys seem to be reading the paper. And hopefully they read the paper after Wednesday's game and saw that. And um, But uh, if leadership steps up, we have a chance. And uh, hopefully we can do that. You guys installed a lot of stuff, especially yesterday at practice. How hard is that with a young team to be able to translate that on the game day on Friday? We've been trying to do that a little bit more, uh, Coulter. Um, you know, having days where we, we have a mental side day, so we're ready to add it in on practice. On uh, We've got today off, but uh, add it in on practice Tuesday. It seems to have worked with this team somewhat uh, where we can, you know, uh, get a good 45-minute running workout in and then follow it up with just, you know, a lot of mental things of what we want to do and certain situations. And, you know, uh, certainly last year uh, we played a lot of games uh, very, very close. And uh, so it comes down to a lot of late game situations. Have you got, got any clarity on rotation and things like that? Oh, it's starting to clear up a little bit. You know, I'm not sure Isaac will play on uh, on Friday. Uh, you know, he's got a hip injury, so uh, I'm not sure he'll play on Friday. But uh, uh, we're getting closer. We're getting closer to the lineup, getting closer to getting comfortable with what, what I think this team can do. Well, was there anything else you noticed from the tape? Uh, maybe that. Well, I, I, the big thing about the tape was uh, it, ver it, it verified what I thought I saw. You know, I thought I saw a team that we didn't play with much emotion. We we uh, didn't stick to our rules with the three or four things we wanted to get done in the game that that we didn't really get done. Uh, so it verified it, and then it you know. Again, this is an age group of kids nowadays where you have to show them more than tell them, and they were able to see that in the film, very long film session of, um, of what we've got to change. You can see in practice, you know, guys yelling switch, guys saying ball, I've got ball, but you don't really hear it as much during a game. Game, right. So um, how do you? Well, there's a term we use is called game slippage. And there's always a there's always a percentage. That's why you kind of overreact on things on defense because there's going to be a percentage that slips in, in the game. And uh, but that was astronomically high in that exhibition game. And I think a lot of that had to do with you know uh, people in the stands. And I knew that it would be that way. Um, you know I didn't exactly help them uh, as far as coaching them on that day. I kind of let them. Uh, we played you know somewhat vanilla. Uh, didn't run many plays. Didn't run much. Uh, so, um, you know, and as the game went along, we had some really good things. First four or five minutes when we scored 20 points in five minutes, we had a lot of good things going on, a lot of good defensive switches and things, and then it kind of deteriorated from there, and, uh, and that's what we certainly have looked at a lot. I know you talked about wanting to have enough depth to be able to get Tyler and Harry off the floor at the same time. Are you ready for that aspect yet? Well, we're going to blend it in. We're going to get them off the floor. I mean, uh, you know, uh, again, I'm certainly not trying to make excuses, but you play guys 1,100 minutes last year, and, and you get down to the game 30, you know, 29, 30, 31, it starts wearing on them. We've got to bring that down. And uh, Tyler last year, uh, you know, would be the first to admit that he gave up some easy baskets on the defensive end, but it really wasn't his fault. You're after 36 minutes, you got to rest somewhere. And, uh, we, he, he would rest out there a little bit, so we've got to get him off. I'd like to get him off two more rotations uh, in a game, which would get him down to about 30, 31 minutes, and Harry about uh, 28, 29 minutes, and uh, and then we'd be, we'd be a lot fresher as the year wears along. And you want to play much more than just 31, 32 this year, right? Say that again. You you want to play upwards of what forty games this year? Would you well, say? well, that's that's kind of been a goal. Yeah. But I'm talking about minutes. I was talking about okay. minutes thirty thirty one minutes for Tyler. But yeah, we've talked all year about the number of games we want to play, including can including uh, uh, Calgary and stuff like that. But uh, you know, we we want to do that. But I want to get the minutes down on Tyler. You know, you take you know you take five minutes a game, and all of a sudden you take that off of his time. You take that times thirty games. 
all of a sudden you've taken him off the floor almost four games of playing time, which benefits you as you go over long. How do you think he's handling just all the expectations he has on him coming into this year? A lot better than I would have when I was his age. I'd probably been carrying all the magazines around showing the chicks what it reads like. But um, he's handled it pretty good. Uh, you know, but he's at, at the same time, as you know, there's not a lot of people that's been at this university that's got the attention that he's gotten. Uh, but, um, you know, he's, he's, I think it's been a little bit of a distraction. Uh, you know, we've put some stop gaps in. I think the, you know, agents and everybody calling and stuff like that has, has worn him out more than anything. And, uh, and you know, it's very simple as I told him, you know. Um, you know, the guy's calling you right now. If, we, if he has a good year, the guy's going to represent him anyway. So uh, let's just focus on handle what you can handle. And all this stuff will work itself out, and we'll make a decision as it goes along. I've had long talks with his family and, his, and him. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I worry about. But, uh, you know, those type of things take care of themselves and they give you the answers as, as the season goes along on what you should do. Yeah, he's stepping up as an upperclassman this season as a junior. How have you seen his growth, I guess, in maturity? I guess that kind of builds yeah. off what you're saying. There. Well, I, I've seen a lot of growth. I, I, um, I think his leadership uh, has grown as a team, uh, uh, to the team. You know, there's always some questions. You know, when you're really good as a freshman and even better as a sophomore, there's some guys that are sitting there going, is he quite that good, is he, you know, and stuff like that. And uh, he's now got the respect of the locker room. So when he says something, it goes a long way in the locker room. We have a very, very cohesive group of guys. Uh, you know, needs, they need to prod each other a little more to challenge each other. But as far as our camaraderie in the locker room, you know, he, he, is, he is very well blended in with them and the guys like him a lot and therefore, He's been one of the guys in his, since we played Wednesday that's really stepped up and been a more vocal guy in practice that has shown some why we've improved a little bit. I know you said you wanted the, the international trip to really jumpstart this team. Mm -hmm. And then with the disappointment from the exhibition game, how do you then reignite that? How do you use the, the Calgary experience as something that helps you guys move forward now? Well, the uh, the Calgary experience, you look at more of the camaraderie and, and the playing of the games. Uh, Wednesday, where we failed, was in the talking and, and execution of things. So they don't really coincide. The things that uh, the things the Calgary trip did for us, they've been pretty evident since day one where we're at. It's just some of the things that we didn't do uh, were things that we've got to do that you get better as a season. I mean, we had you know, 16 practices for Calgary between summer and, and Calgary practices. You know, we're at practice 24, 25 now, so we're a little more detailed in what we're doing, and that's the things that hurt us the other night. Like Devontae, Devin, and Joe, um, mm -hmm. is where they at? Back to 100%. Uh, yeah, all three of them are back to 100%. Uh, thought they would have been. DK had, take, had missed three or four days of practice. Uh, Joe and Vante had kind of some bumps, and just thought a day off, and, and, and that hurt us because the, uh, certainly Vontae is in our top eight, and Joe's had some really good games and things like that, so uh, it, it, it screwed up our rotations. Do you think Vontae can be kind of an unsung hero? I year? do. I think he's been very good in practice. I've been, his energy's been top notch every day. Um, I think we miss when he's he's got that bulldog attitude and he gives us some toughness, and I thought we missed that. I, th I thought last year when we inserted him in the lineup, we kind of took that on, and, and we need that. And he's kind of adopted that role again, and he's been really good in practice. How have Connor and Kelgen worked themselves in so far? Yeah, uh, I, thought, I thought they were the two guys the other night that improved as the game went along. I thought, you know, they, they, they'd been out of, out of game situations for a year, and uh, I thought in the second half they got a lot of things done. When I looked at the film, I was like, you first half, second half, they got better as the game went along. I think you guys can see the athleticism that Kelgen brings. Connor has the knack for just kind of getting plays done. Uh, they both give us something that that we somewhat lacked here in our first three years and uh, uh, gives us the depth. And those guys will be on the floor 25, 26 minutes, and they really give us some things that we haven't had. Harry had a, a hard time adjusting early on in his freshman year, but then really locked mm -hmm. in conference play. How much different is it now this year? as opposed to this time this year as opposed to last year. It's an overused statement, but it's, it's, 
I mean, you guys have been to practice. It's almost literally night and day. I mean, you just, first of all, you check his body out. I mean, his body is a very strong, stout. Uh, I think guys beat him up. You know, I've obviously been watching the Omaha game here. Uh, he got beat up on double teams a lot. And, and when we set a ball screen, they kind of forced him into turnovers. And uh, now he kind of looks at that and steps through it. It's a lot stronger, uh, bigger leader. Uh, you know, he's been going through. He had knocked some shots down for a few days. and and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, percentages over the course of career, the amount of minutes he's played are legit, and the, the percentage say he's going to knock it down as he, as, as he plays more and more. So I haven't really concerned about that, but his improvement has been, uh, has been very, very good.